Hey guys, this is Trevor from Ecklers. I'm here today to talk to you about heating for your car. Now heating can be a huge enemy when it comes to your engine because it can lead to engine failure or any manner of other problems. Uh, now there's a couple of contributing factors for why this can happen, among them being high temperatures, um, it, your engine accessories creating excess heat, uh, stop and go traffic, uh, or it could even lead back to just subpar cooling uh, from the manufacturer of your car. Now, when you have excess heat in your engine, it can lead to metal expansion, which will then lead to the gas ins inside your car uh, losing their tension, which can lead to all kinds of engine problems. So, the point is, uh, to keep your car running safely and successfully for years to come, you gotta have good cooling. Good. A very f affordable and easy to install solution is an electric cooling fan. Uh, it's like I said, it's affordable, it's simple to install, and it's very effective. Um, fans like these come in two primary categories. There's push fans and pull fans. Now, uh, they work on the same principles as your factory uh, cooling fan. The pull fan mounts behind the radiator and pulls air through it, while the push fan mounts in front of the radiator or AC condenser for, car, uh, for cars equipped with air conditioning, and as the name implies, pushes air through the radiator. Both have their advantages and disadvantages, uh, and I think we're going to explore both of them. Alright, now we're going to show you a short demonstration. This is one of the pull fans. Um, as you can see, it's going to pull air from behind it and push it out, if you would do the honors. Jeez, the, the air is coming through like this way. Now, the pull fan is very efficient in that you can mount the largest fan possible and are restricted primarily by the width of the radiator and the depth of the cooling fan motor. You will need to measure the width of the radiator core, uh, we will be covering how to measure the radiator core in an upcoming video, uh, and measure the depth of the radiator from the front of the engine. Once you determine the correct size needed, then you can wire your fan motor to direct power, turning it on and off with a simple toggle switch, or using a cooling temperature sensor that mounts into your engine cycle's um, excuse me into your engine cycle's head and then the fan will turn on and off automatically based on the predetermined temperature uh, range of the sensor. Now like we said, this is a model of a pull fan. Your other option is going to be a push fan which is slightly less efficient because it doesn't create the same surface area cooling effect as the pull fan does. Uh, but by mounting, it in, by mounting the fan in front of your radiator, there's less of a vacuum effect created uh, between the radiator and the shroud diminishing the cooling effects. Pull fans are also limited uh, by the confined area between the uh, air conditioning condenser and the front end grill with newer cars. However, when used in conjunction with the factory cooling fan, a push fan is a great asset. Uh, when your engine is idle for extended periods of time or when you're faced with stop and go traffic. When it's wired to a cooling sensor, it is activated by the engine temperature. Uh, therefore, it will not run unnecessarily and it won't cause your charging system to overwork or your battery to drain. Now, one major issue when it comes to fans is noise. The factory designed cooling fan that you have in your car um, will help cool your engine, but it'll also create a lot of unnecessary noise. So, you know, when you're cruising along or when you're trying to listen to music, whatever, you usually won't be able to hear it. However, these are designed to not be overly uh, uh, intrusive when it comes to your music. So hopefully, the only hum you hear is yourself humming along with the radio. And just remember guys, when you want the best in cooling fans, trust Eckler's.